Brett, if you would open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. As I said, we were taking a break from Judges this evening to Ephesians chapter number 6. And I chose this because the, of the teens uh, testifying. Uh, I've been, I don't know if you all saw the, the church uh, Facebook page. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I, I put something out, and, uh, and that's part of the study. And so... Uh, if you find your place in Ephesians 6, I invite you to stand as we honor uh, God with the reading of his word. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to begin in verse number 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, take, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the teaching and preaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss tonight about the, the spiritual battle, Lord, I ask that you would help us to stay focused, you would help us all to stay engaged, that we would not allow Satan to buy for any time for anyone, Lord, but we would stay focused tonight. Lord, and I'm sure that if we do these things, stay focused and pay attention, we'll be able to give you honor and you glory for everything that is accomplished. Father, I ask that you would have your will and your way tonight, for it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Speak to you tonight on the subject of spiritually battling. Spiritually battling. We all know this portion of scripture, I would say. Most of us in here could probably uh, uh, quote a lot of these verses. We could uh, talk about, what the, uh, about, about these verses, what they mean. And being so, sometimes I think we forget who our enemy is. We do. Because unfortunately, we fight, with, we fight against each other. And not with each other. There's a difference. And so we, ha we are in a spiritual battle. I've been studying this, and I want to tell you this. Satan fought me tooth and nail this week. I would say very much tooth and nail. Uh, Thursday was a very uh, difficult day uh, for me, even though I was off work and I, was, I had some plans. Uh, uh, Thursday uh, was a difficult day. Satan was doing his best uh, on me. And, and so uh, we need to remember who we're dealing with. The first thing I want us to, as in a way of introduction, our reality is a hostile environment. Our reality is a hostile environment. I'm not just talking about the hostility in our society, which has gone way above what it should be. But our reality, not just the physical reality of our society, but uh, uh, the spiritual reality that we deal with, because there's two realities. You have the physical reality, and you have a spiritual reality, and both of them are hostile environments. And the reality is that we meet each day with both of these uh, struggles, the physical struggle, the day-to-day -day with the physical, with humanity, and then we have our spiritual struggle day-to-day -day with that spiritual battle that we face. Our enemies are not just spiritual, right? 
But it says here, it says not just, just spiritual, but very powerful. They are very, listen, our enemy is very powerful. Very powerful. Not only is it very powerful, it's expanse. If you don't know what expanse means, it means it's far-reaching. It's not just here. Uh, the same enemy we deal with here is the same enemy that churches in Ghana and Africa deal with. So not only is our enemy spiritual and it's powerful, uh, but it's expanse. Uh, uh, wickedness and darkness, this is the, the reality that we deal with. This struggle is not just a certain part of the church or a select or a sect of believers, but it's all of our struggle. There's this reality of this spiritual battle that we're dealing with. It's not just set for one sect of the church. It's not just for those who teach Sunday school. It's not just a, a, a battle for those who, who preach or who, who, who lead and sing or who sing special. No, the, the reality of this struggle is we all struggle with this spiritual battle that we face. Every single believer, it doesn't matter if you're a newborn right out of the gate or you are a 90-year-old believer and you've been saved for 85 years, you are going to have the same struggles that a new baby believer have, has, and that is spiritual wickedness in high places. This, this is the reality of it, uh, of this spiritually of the spiritual battle. Often the reality is that we tend to forget it. It's easy to fix our eyes on one reality, the physical or the human. We can say, well, this, the reason that I, it's like this is because so-and-so. The reason why my, the house is in chaos is because my son or my daughter or my, ch my children, they're not listening to me. Or you can say, well, it's not, the reason it's like this is because my mom or my dad or my mom and my dad are treating me thus or thus. No, the reality of the battle is not, it's not human. It's spiritual. Why? Because we are not a nation. We are a church. And so you can say, well, it is human because of this. No, it stemmed from a spiritual battle. Why? Because someone neglected what they were supposed to do earlier that day. So listen, uh, this reality that we think that sometimes our enemy or what we're battling is mom, dad, brother, sister, son or daughter, Grandpa, grandma, boss, whatever you want to put in the blank, oftentimes we think that is the battle. But it's not. We live in a hostile environment of this spiritual battle. Secondly, be strong in your home. Be strong. In your home. Look at, ver uh, look at verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Conflict is inevitable in the home. Right? Conflict is inevitable. Jesus, the greatest pastor that ever lived, still had conflict. The disciples still had conflict. And as we discussed this morning, some disciples, their expectations of who Jesus was and what he was supposed to do didn't meet it. He didn't meet their expectations. So it doesn't matter how well of a pastor you have or how good of a pastor you have or how good of a Sunday school teacher you have or whoever or how good your mom or dad is, how well they listen, how well they're able to articulate, how, how well they're able to do things. There's still going to be conflict in, in husbands and wife. It doesn't matter how good your wife is or how good your husband is or how they treat you. You're still going to have conflict. You have two imperfect people, try, uh, uh, as in a husband and wife, living together. Not only that, you have a family, whether that's three, four, five, or six people. You have that many people, imperfect people, living under one house together, and conflict is inevitable. There's a spiritual battle 
for God-glorifying marriages and homes. There is a spiritual battle for God-glorifying marriages and homes. Are we preparing ourselves spiritually to honor God at the home between husband and wife, parents and children, knowing their spiritual resistance? Are we preparing ourselves spiritually to honor God in the home? Not just between husband and wife, or parents and children, or brother or sibling between sibling, knowing that there is a spiritual hindrance or spiritual resistance. Satan wants to wreak havoc in your marriage, in your home, and are you prepared? Sometimes, if you were, listen, if you were to go and look at everyone's social media, because it seems like everybody posts everything about social media, I have learned over the last couple of years just to post little, you know. If you look at some of these church members' social medias, they're not prepared at all. They are nowhere near prepared. They don't even, it's not even a thought in their mind. Because they're just doing, they're just what we call at Walmart, f- just flying by the seat of our pants. We're reacting, not preparing. That's what we use at Walmart all the time. We react to things, we don't prepare for things. And in the spiritual life, we do this same thing. A lot of times, we're not prepared for what's coming. Instead, we react to as it's on its way. Or it's here now. Mom and daughter, yeah, 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 just shouting at each other. Uh, uh, mom or dad and daughter, yeah, 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 yeah. husband and wife, it's your fault. Why, did, why don't you have dinner ready for me when I come home? Or why can't you, why, listen, why can't you uh, just listen to me instead of trying to fix everything? We react instead of prepared. We do, right? And a lot of times, there's a lot of believers that are not prepared for the spiritual resistance. Paul here says in verse 10 that we are to strengthen yourselves in the Lord. Be, finally, brethren, because he's going through, uh, in Ephesians, uh, he's going through several different things with the church at Ephesus. He's gone through husbands and wives, and he's gone through children and servants and masters and all kinds of different things. And so he says, finally. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. His strength and power is available every day. But it's by putting on the armor. It's by putting on the armor. His strength and power is available every day by putting on the full armor armor of God see when we put on this armor of God it's all we need to face these realities that's what we need this is what we need that's all we need because it's we're getting by putting on the armor of the Lord where it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might how Put on the whole armor of God. He answers how we're able to withstand and how we're able to do that. We are to put on the armor. Why? Because of the threat. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are to put on the whole armor of God because of the threat. There is a really... A real threat. Satan is a real threat. With weapons. Which we call wiles, right? 
that aim to destroy and kill us. We, you know, you say, well, what's a while? It's fiery dart, basically, right? Uh, an arrow that is on fire. We've seen enough mythological movies and old movies where they light the end of the arrow and let it go, right? Satan is a real threat. Peter says, 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be village, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion seeking about who, whom he may devour. He's a real threat. And to, to think that he's not is extremely naive. See, the preeminent field of battle is spiritual, not physical. That's the preeminent field of battle. It's urgent that we take up the armor of God. Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. It is urgent. When we're obedient to God, and put on the armor, we've done everything necessary to withstand the weapons of Satan. You know, there's, there's a couple of YouTube channels out there that people do to see what kind of armor will, will this certain rounds not penetrate. One of them I like to watch is called Demolition Ranch. He, I mean, people send him all kinds of homemade armor, and he starts at, uh, at a twenty two caliber and goes up to whatever until it's destroyed. Folks, Satan cannot destroy the armor of God. It is urgent that we put it on every single day if we are going to not only survive, but win. So, you can say, well, it's not my, my battle today is not really physical. It's spiritual. It's not spiritual, it's physical. Well, I'm sorry. But you can get the best grade military vest that's out there. And what Satan has for you, it will go right through. It will go right through. But before we can stand, we need to be obedient. That is, obedient to what? Putting on the armor of God. Be obedient to this book. Stand, therefore, with the armor on. Paul goes into verses 14 through 17 to stand with the armor on. He goes into detail, kind of, he gives a detail, a, a detail specific armor that we are to put on for this spiritual battle. Having put on the armor of God, we're able to stand, and the only way we're able to survive and even win the battle of, of the reality of spiritual warfare is girded with the armor of God. So the second thing what, what, that I had for you was to be strong in your home. How do we be strong in the home? We be obedient to God. <coughs> Recognizing that the battle that we have is not against each other. It's not husband against wife. Though some marriages that are struggling, they may think so because so one of them is doing this or one of them is not doing this. No, no, no. It's, it starts with disobedient to God and his word. That's where the struggle begins. And it's not against one another. Recognize your enemy. I'm not a soldier. I've... And I know movies can't tell, the, doesn't really show, they glorify everything, but before a battle begins, there's strategy, there's study, there's intelligence that goes into it. Right, Brother Roy? Look okay, how you know. There's some, there has some kind of a study and in intelligence on in knowing what you're against. Not, you may not know the battle plan, 
You may not know uh, specific details, but you know your enemy. You know what they're capable of. And not, that, not only that, but what they have. The kind of military weaponry they have. Or what, they're, what they have access to. Spiritually, we need to know our enemy. And I'm not, and I'm not, seeing, I'm not saying go and have conversations with the, with the devil. Your enemy is not your spouse. Your suffering marriage probably is not in the lack of Bible knowledge. It's probably not the need of a new technique. If you were, if we, if we had a Christian bookstore nearby anymore, you could go. Listen, if you, let's just say, let's just, you go into the Bible and you find specific verses in the Bible about marriage. You might find a half a dozen, not just verses, but let's just say passages. But you go to a Christian bookstore, hundreds, and all those hundreds of books, very little of them talk about being obedient to God. It's all about having a new technique, listening, communicating. This, that, and usually, and I want to tell you this, if you, like I said uh, in that post, if you've been a member of the Groth Road Baptist Church for a length of time, it's not Bible knowledge that you need. Because if you're a faithful member, you've gotten that. Because there's been some preaching going on in this building for years. It's not even a new technique you might, there might be a technique that you need to, you know, help out a little bit, but that's not the main problem. The main problem in the struggle in the marriage is disobedient to God and his word. Because your spouse, your husband, your wife is not your enemy. Let's talk about children. It could be that, uh, that it maybe as a young adult you wasn't exposed to a lot of Bible preaching. Okay, you might need a little bit. Well, maybe as a, young, uh, as a young parent, you don't know all the techniques or disciplines in, in helping raising a child, and you, you might need that. You might need a little bit uh, uh, of those things. I kind of moved ahead of... In my notes, but before we get to the children, not putting on the armor of God, preparing for a fight against Satan. That, that's what I mean by that is the, the, the struggle. The reason you're struggling is because you're not preparing for the fight. I meant to come up here for a minute. In dealing with marriage, we have several married couples in here. There's probably several that are married watching tonight. My enemy is not her. Right? The problem in, mar in most marriages and being disobedient to God and his word is marriages today are fighting against one another. But instead, we are to fight with each other we are to fight Satan together not against each other if if I'm going to have a God honoring God glorified marriage we won't succeed in fact, we will end up divorced if we spend our time fighting against each other and not fighting with each other. It's important that you, as family, as husbands and wives, get this. Your enemy is not your wife or your husband. It's Satan. And the fact of children. You can stay. Uh, you can have a seat right there because I want to use you in a minute again. Your children, the main problem or enemy is not just you. 
It's not just sin, but it's Satan. Now, I want to talk to us as a church. If I can have everybody come up front right here, line up. Just line up right here. If you can. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's not necessary. If you're not able to, then don't. If, you know, if you're physically unable to, then don't. I'll stay up here for those that are watching. We as a church, are we prepared to have a God-honoring and God-glorifying church? The problem that a lot of churches have when, they, when you find out there's a debt, when you go visit a church and it's dead, and, 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 they're, and it may not be because of the, for the lack of people, but the reason is is because they're not fighting with each other. If we as a church family don't learn to fight with each other instead of and get rid of fighting against one another, we're not going to succeed. We're not going to be the church that God designed us to be. And, and listen, God is, and, and, and it's not because I'm not saying that we're not going to become a big church. No, that's, my focus isn't numbers. And having a giant populated church, no, my desire as your pastor is that we succeed in winning souls, being obedient to the word of God, and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And if we are not obedient to God and putting on the whole armor of God and fighting with each other instead of against each other, we won't succeed. In fact, we will fail. And we will be another notch on Satan's belt for another church closing its doors. Are we prepared as a church family? So, well, Brother Mark, what are you doing as a pastor to prepare? I'm preaching the word of God to you. I am doing the best that I can in my ability to communicate the word of God, to challenge you, to encourage you. But you have to take that responsibility and put on the armor of God and fight with each other against Satan. That's, I'm trying to do my part. You say, well, you're failing. That might be. I may not be a very good one, and I know I'm not a great communicator, but that doesn't negate the fact that you as a church or we as a church have a responsibility to fight together. Folks, this battle, this battle we are on, this spiritual reality, the threat that what threatens our homes, what threatens our church, it's too big for you and for me. It is too big for us. It's larger than us. Therefore, th this is supposed to drive us, this battle, this spiritual battle we're on, is to drive us to honor God, to be obedient to God, to put on the armor of God so we can withstand the wiles of the devil. So in the evil day, we're able to stand. Hello? This battle is too big for any of us. It doesn't matter uh, how long you've been a Christian. It doesn't matter how, how many souls you've reached for God that you are able to lead to Christ. It doesn't matter how many doctrines or how many degrees you have in theology or this or that. This battle is too big for us. Wherefore, we need to Put on the whole armor of God. And so, Satan wants you to lose. And will do whatever is necessary to shift the blame. It was that woman. That woman you gave me. He will use 
whatever is necessary to shift the blame to create bitterness in your heart towards one another and towards God. That's what he will do. Understand the fight. Take spiritual action and put on the armor. Let's pray. Father.